JJ Jinx, Truck Stop Knives. Today, I'd like to tell you a couple of stories, well, about some small collections that I've got, that I've accrued over the years, and I think I'll start with um, my toothpicks that I keep in this bag, this this uh, Crown Royal whiskey bag. <laughs> It's obscenely large for what's in it, because contained within are some of the smallest knives you can come across. Um, I don't know if anyone's ever really officially termed, I don't know, the, the, the variety of knives that can be offered. Uh, I, I kind of personally kind of refer to it as like the case connect collection, uh, even though they came up with mostly none of them what I mean is like if you go to case knives or case cutlery dot com or one of their factory outlets they've got a basically a bunch of what are called knife patterns um, like the most popular one being the trapper and then there's the congress the canoe knife um, and what have you and one of those varieties, which I'm sure Case Cutlery did not invent, but the only reason why I bring up their name is because um, that's like their bread and butter, is they, they make these little pocket knives. They're, they don't um, do, like, flippers and OTFs or anything. They're, they're just traditional little pocket knives. They really hold their value. Um, Case Cutlery is a, is, a, is a good company. They're, they're high-quality stuff. But anyway, my point is that um, kind of like maybe, I don't know, a year into my knife collecting episode midlife crisis thing, I, I was thinking about a type of knife to collect. What, 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 what as, a, as a knife enthusiast, what can I say is something that I collect? Um, the obvious answer is a trapper, which... I can show you a generic one right here. This is a cheapo seven, seven, eight, eight dollar frost cutlery trapper for anybody who doesn't know, which is like none of you. Everybody knows what a trapper is. Come on, it's big. It's got two blades, and um, it's one of these like liner lock things I could see the appeal um, it's huge for a pocket knife it's shiny it's pretty it's got lots of room for um, doing whatever you want with it really uh, you, can, you can modify um, customize personalize this to your heart's content because you got so much room on the blade if you want engraving uh, on the handle material if you want like different uh, bone uh, wood whatever the hell you want this one's got like I don't know a Henry rifle in it or something um, I, I, I see the appeal but I'm not really into trapper knives it's just not me for a couple of reasons. One, when I was thinking about what type of knife to collect, I didn't want to go too mainstream because the market is so freaking flooded. There are billions of these things, all different types of materials, all different types of steels, bolsters. Oh, it's just too much. You have to be a trillionaire to really like keep on top of it. And, you know, you don't necessarily have to be a completionist type of collector, but um, I wanted to narrow it down. And that's the bottom line is like maybe I could collect trappers that uh, were made only of, um, I don't know, a certain handle material or a certain steel. But even then, like it can get expensive because these are big knives and... Um, I'm just not into them. You got a clip point knife and a spade blade. 
which if you don't know what a spade blade is or what it's used for, it's totally obsolete. Uh, nobody who has a trapper knife like this, except for like maybe, I don't know, 12 people who are cowboys, use the spade blade for its intended purpose. And yet, it's super popular. Um, it's to spay animals without cutting them. It's a dull edge uh, without stabbing them, rather. Of course, you gotta cut them. <laughs> it's made for cutting but not stabbing. And to spay animals, that's why it's called a spay blade. I'd like to know how many people collect trappers actually go out and spay animals? <whistles> Zero. Um, so, yeah, it's just not a thing that I'm into it, but I, I, I own like two because I just needed to see what they were about. Uh, but what I decided was, well, there's so many other options. You got the Congress knife, the canoe, the blah, and then the blah. Um, I was interested in the teardrop knife, but that seems to be like almost a case, um, case knives uh, exclusive and they can get expensive if you want to know own like every single one of them you know they're going for 60 70 80 bucks a pop if not more for the really high-end ones and I don't have that kind of money I just want to find one thing collect that so I decided early on okay well if I don't want to spend a lot of money and I want to collect something uh, why not this one this is a Texas mini toothpick, or so they say. A mini toothpick because they make them larger, but this is the smaller one. This one's made by Case Knives. I don't remember what I paid for it. It's like 40 bucks, I think. Don't remember for sure. And it's like a blue bone thing. And that's that's what that's what the one thing you can count on with Case Knives is that this is genuine bone, which usually comes from the hip bone of a cow that they sort of generically cut up and stain this color and you know it's not as glorious as it sounds it's not like a oh I, I shot this uh, majestic beast out in Siberia and made these knives with it nah it's just like surplus cow bone but that's okay uh, at least you know you're something you're, you're getting something that's not like plastic because if you are getting something that's plastic, pay for it. You know, this was like 40 bucks. All my plastic ones, which I'll show you soon, were less than like 15 bucks. Anyway, this is a case cutlery. It's, I, I've already said how their quality is good. Their steel is good. This is their Texas toothpick. Um, I kind of like the, uh, how small it is, but it, Somehow it's still sort of ergonomic. You put your th finger all the way up at the top and, like, I don't know, cut stuff, which is what knives are for. Texas Mini Toothpick. So here's a plastic one. This is by Rough Rider that I bought from Smoky Mountain Knife Works. This was, like, 12 13 bucks. You notice they have these, like, three grooves on the side and then one groove on this bolster. That's a recurring theme that you will see. There's nothing remarkable about this except that it's made out of 440 steel and it's made in China. Which will also be a recurring theme because the next one in my collection is pretty much the exact same friggin' knife. Except instead of that fake plastic bone material, this is made out of, well, not fake plastic, but actual plastic, except this stuff they say glows in the dark so I was like oh I gotta have that one so I bought it never really tested it because well after buying uh, this generic like also Smoky Mountain Knife Knifeworks uh, wood one I also had to go a little bit higher tier and I got the buck knife version as well, um, which I, I am a big fan of buck knives. They're a little bit overpriced in my opinion, but their quality is fine. 
and then I decided, well, after I saw this guy, <laughs> okay, if that was a mini toothpick, I guess this would be a micro toothpick. If I were on a desert island alone, and I have my choice between this and, like, I don't know, any random object on the planet, I might be better off choosing any random object on the planet because this is just so tiny. Um, but it's got like a mother fake, well, I'm assuming fake mother of pearl ish thing. But um, that sort of ended my interest in the Texas toothpick binge. And I said, you know, maybe I don't need to collect knives for like the type of that they are and think more about the experience of what it is to collect a knife um, I did not travel anywhere to get these I didn't meet anybody to get these I just clicked a couple buttons on the internet and I got these and for a lot of people that's totally fine and there's nothing wrong with that but as a truck stop knife collector I prefer the, the, the travel, the grit, the road, uh, the filth that you find in the places that these really shitty knives exist. So, that being said, I'm going to switch gears and talk about a company called Sanremnu, which has nothing to do with anything I've talked about in the past 10 minutes. San Renmu is a Chinese company. They make knives, and they they make um, a lot of really neat, interesting kind of knives. Like this one, uh, which is like a I don't know, kind of a camping. How do you categorize something like this? It's got a built-in carabiner. Which is pretty cool. And this frame that's like sort of cut out and minimalistic. Um, it's, it's very plasticky. It doesn't feel like it's anything high quality. Uh, and it's impossible for me to show you this on the camera. Because it's like etched into the black of the frame. It says life and geometry. And I couldn't figure out how to open the blade at first. Because, like, this this thumb stud was, like, spinning. And I was like, oh, the thumb stud's loose. I gotta tighten it. So I started turning it to tightening it. And I realized that that wasn't doing anything. So I what I eventually figured out was that that's actually a button. And you push. You see that liner up there at the top? I'm pushing it up, 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 up. That releases the opening mechanism. And I was like, oh my gosh. Once I figured that out, I was like, that's so cool. That's such a neat safety feature. You don't have to have like a fancy uh, safety switch or something. It's built right into the thumb stud. You just push it. And it, it's like the other side of the liner that it moves aside allows you to de deploy the blade, which is a very handsome Tanto-style blade. Uh, it reads, Designer Gobbledygook. Uh, I don't know. San Renmu knives are weird like that. This is the model 7049LTE-PH. Um, so yeah, it's, it's pretty neat, and like, you got this neon green Senrenmu on the side, which looks really weird if you look at it backwards, and it's very smooth action, and it was like, wow, that's smooth, and it turns out that it actually does use, like, some kind of, I don't know phosphor broke um, spacers or something but yeah 
So, um, I bought it for, I don't know, 15 bucks from a DH gate. And I saw some other San Renmu stuff on there. I was like, San Renmu is a pretty big thing in China. And there was a folding knife that pretty much looks exactly the same. You got the carabiner and the knife and blah, blah, blah. I just keep it in this fancy case because it's kind of a cool case. It's got one of them things that you hang up on the tab. And I can imagine seeing this on a, in like a sporting goods store, like hung up on the tab. So I keep it in here. Um, it's a little bit smaller, but it is a, well, I don't read Chinese, but it says since 1998, so that's cool. Oh, yeah, and I, I can't really go too much further without talking about <laughs> the infamous, uh, I, I'm not even going to take it out of the plastic wrap, the Model 7010 which is the predecessor to the Model 710, which is also kind of known as the Mini Sabenza clone. Thousands of videos on that knife. So, I won't bother. But I got another one. Somewhere. Ah. Nope, sorry, this is not a Senrenmu knife. I don't know what I was thinking. This is a Gonzo knife. <laughs> So, the third topic is Gonzo. Gonzo is, I, I believe, Chinese as well. And they make a whole bunch of really, actually really good quality knives that you can get between like $15 and $40. This one has an access lock. And it's got a tip down or uh, I'm sorry a tip up high riding clip it, this is everything that I want and it's smooth and it's 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 awesome and this is the Gonzo uh, Firebird model FB 760 so for some reason I thought in my mind this was a San Renmu it's not it's a Gonzo and if you want to get into Gonzo knives, well, that's going to be a video for another day because this is the only one that I own. No, that's a lie. I own a couple of other Firebirds. Uh, but this is a kind of a unique model. It's got the access lock on it. So, anyway, I guess this video was a combination of Chinese knives that are actually kind of good. And... Trapper knives a little bit. Um, and my collection of these, uh, what do you call them? Texas, mini Texas toothpicks. <coughs> and um, just to put it off, put it off, just to end this on a nice little kick. There's another type of knife that I had my eye on. You saw this in another video, but it's the old lady leg. So, like, for me, the Texas toothpick and the old lady leg, these are kind of, like, the same to me. They're just novelty knives. I don't know the history of a toothpick knife. I know the history of a Barlow knife. I know the history of, I don't know, Oppenau or Buck. Don't know the history of a lady knife lady leg knife don't know the history of a toothpick knife but now that i'm thinking about it maybe i'll look it up maybe i'll talk about it some other time until then keep collecting those shitty ass knives at those shitty ass truck stops don't forget to wash off the filth jj jinx truck stop knives